So a couple of just semi-recent trig questions from step two papers. We'll start with this one, then do that one in this video. So here, um, here's the first question we do. Cos of a plus b using null identity, can we prove this thing here? I'm going to start with this side over here and think about cos 4a first. Obviously, that can be written as cos 3a plus a, I guess, in brackets, which according to this identity is this one, because cos is the one that goes cos cos minus sine sine. And now cos 2a, now I could, of course, say that's cos brackets a plus a, or I could say it's cos 3a minus a. Um, and if I do that, then what's quite nice about doing that is that you get a lot of the same things. And so if you just simply add these together, you'll get this one plus this one, which is actually double the right-hand side, is equal to this plus this. But these two cancel at the end here. Those two cancel, so you just end up with this plus this. Um, and you actually end up with two lots of them, right, which will cancel the half, which will end up with the left-hand side. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's pretty much done, uh, all done and dusted. So that's nice. And then the same thing for sine A cos 3A. So we'll do very much the same thing. We'll start with cos, with, with sine 4A this time, assuming that, of course, the way that step usually works is you just have to get out the other one a lot of the time. If they've really shown you how to do one case of it, you just do it for the other case. So do, do the sine thing. Same thing for sine 2 of A. Let's say that's 3 of A minus A. And now what I want is I want sine A cos 3A, which is um, this term and this term. So if I add those together, they'll cancel which I don't want. So if I take them away, um, they'll come together, and these two will cancel this time. Those two will add together for two lots of them, which can halve down the two, and you'll end up with uh, with half of the thing there. And so that will be my identity for that one there, which I'll just put there. Good, solve this equation. Now, the only thing that this has that's relevant to what we just did is this thing here you can think of as four lots of cos 2x times cos x times cos 3x. But cos x times cos 3x is this thing here. So let's just shove that in. That we just like it must be the case that we have to do that because that's just how step works. So it must be the case that we do that. Now, how do we make progress from here? Because there's nothing else going on in here that's helpful uh, that we've got here. So well, okay. Well, let's think about this cos 4x business because there's there's a couple of cos 2x's here. So let's maybe keep those. The cos 4x I can write in terms of cos 2x, because cos is the nice one, right? Where you can write it in terms of the other things. I've just cancelled the four and a half there. Because, of course, cos 2x is cos squared minus sine squared. The sine squared is one minus cos squared. So you can always write cos 2x in terms of cos regular x. Except what we could now do is we could just double all of the angles to get cos 4x is two cos squared 2x minus one. And now this thing here could maybe go in here because then we'd end up with an equation that just had cos 2x's in it. So that's exactly what I'll do. I'll just shove that result into here and, uh, and expand out and rearrange. And we end up with a cubic in cos of 2x. So I'm going to replace cos of 2x with c and just have an easier to cubic to look at. Uh, the, the key idea when solving cubics, of course, is to do some factor theorem, maybe, to try and find a solution. If you sit here long and hard, um, eventually you'll find c is minus a half will work because you'll end up with minus a half there because you get an eighth times four so that'll be minus half that will be positive one no sorry that'll be positive half so that cancels that will be a positive one and there's a negative one so it all cancels fantastic that means a factor is 2c plus one and you could do some algebraic division but i'm of course not going to i'm just going to spot it um 2c times 2c squared makes 4c cubed and one times minus one makes minus one so that's all good and now we need 2c squared so we've already got 2c squareds so we can't have anything here because that would give us more 2c squareds. And we need minus 2c's. We've already got minus 2c's. So actually, there's nothing in the middle here. This is all just already perfect. Um, and so the solutions are c is minus half, or of course, cos 2x is minus half, or um, c is 1 over, or plus minus 1 over 2. Sorry, plus minus the square root of 1 over 2, of course, which is a plus minus 1 over root 2, something like that. Um, now, the solutions to this, we're looking between 0 and 2 pi, of course, if we've got a 2x here, looking between 0 and 2 pi. Um, so solutions to that are, um, well, you've got to draw, so in my head, I just have the cos graph. I've just drawn it in my head. I can say I'm minus half when I'm pi over 2 plus another pi over 6, I guess, would be my first solution, which would be 2 pi over 3. I think that's I think that sounds about right. And then the other solution, of course, would be 360 or 2 pi. I guess I should say um, 2 pi minus uh, a bunch of stuff, but minus what we just had. Um, or you could say drawing the graph. Yeah, I should have really just put the graph down here, shouldn't I? Um, just being good at exact values, very good, at, very important in, in step. Um, so be better at the man than I am. 
Um, the other solution, if we go all the way down and up again, so we're looking for 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 6 to get here, which I believe is what that is. Um, and yeah, then divide both solutions by 2, and we'll get there. And then this one, so now we're looking for, well, this is actually almost nicer because to get to 1 over root 2, you're just looking to be the pi over 4s. And of course, doing plus minus them means that you can just be all of them. So we can be pi over 4, we can be 3 pi over 4, we can be 5 pi over 4, because this will give the negative 1, or 7 pi over 4. Um, so that was actually almost easier. Then divide them all by 2, and we'll end up with all these. And I think those will be all of our solutions to this question here. Yeah, however you do your exact values, things at the end, just, uh, and I just have a graph in my head that I draw, and I figure out the sums as I do them. Um, however you do them, just make sure you have a system for that um, when you enter step. Anyway, we come to the last part of the question, which is prove um, that if this is true, so we can start here with this, then these two results come about. Very helpful that they've given us these two things to aim for. So we're going to start here. Now, nothing that we've got so far has tans in it. And also, it doesn't really seem like this method would work very well for tan because the tan double formulas or the tan compound formulas don't really work in the same nice way that sine and cos do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as sines and coses because then I can just use the things, hopefully, that we've done before. So okay, this is important, by the way, and we'll come back to this, but the fact that you're divided by cos here is going to be relevant later. Anyway, but for now, I can just, I think, cross-multiply this out. And the reason that would be helpful is because now I have here a sine x cos 3x, and they conspicuously made me figure out what that was earlier, so that would seem helpful to put in there. And I also have a cos x cos... Oh, sorry, I have a cos x sine 3x over here, which I might just need to work out. So uh, based on the things that we did previously, so I, I replaced the sine x cos 3x that we found earlier, and now I'm just going to guess that I have to do the same for cos x sine 3x. So this is what we had earlier. So if I just, I guess, add them together, would that give me a cos a sine 3a term? So if I just add them together and then divide by 2, I think that will give me it. So now I can replace those two things with that. We end up with this here. So, okay, how is that helpful? Well, at this point, I just decided to expand everything out. Or I actually just doubled everything, sorry. Before I expanded out, I just doubled everything. And now, this is where this comes in helpful, because this seems like a mess. But I'm supposed to be aiming for cos 6x and sine 4x. Now, I've already got sine 4x's. So, okay, but cos 6x, where's that coming from? Well, it seems like we're going to have to build up some of these cos 2x and 4x terms into sine, into cos 6x. So let's just look at the formula again and think, okay, well, if I want cos 6x, if I use a 4x here and a 2x there, that will look a bit like this. Is there any way I can get this out of this here? Well, well, actually, I have I have that bit there, and I have and I have that bit there. I just have some other stuff. So what happens if I expand the whole thing? And now I think, well, okay, well, well, well again, this thing is is right there. It, 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 sorry, it's right there. It is also there, but it's it's here. And it's also, the, the second bit is there. And if I move that to the other side, it will become a minus. The sine 4x is matched, so they could just be factorized out. And I'd end up with cos 6x right next to it. And actually, the same thing happens with the black terms on the other side, if you notice. Similar but different. Um, because we end up with a, a sine 2x in common with a, with a sine 2 cos 4, sorry, sine 2 sine 4, and a cos 2 cos 4 here. And actually, we can combine those. Looking at this formula again, if we just put a minus here and a plus there, we could combine the doubles of cos and sine into each other to end up with maybe a 4x minus 2x, cos 4x, cos 2x minus sine 4x, sine 2x, sorry, plus sine 4x, sine 2x. If you have a minus here, you have a plus here. So actually this, if you factorize out the sine 2x as well, both of these bracketed terms are perfect. This one is just cos 6x, as said here, and this one is cos 2x, if you use 4x minus 2x to make this a plus, and it all works perfectly. So that's a super difficult spot, but the fact that they gave you this was where you're supposed to get from there. The fact that you rearrange it and then see you can do the same thing with this side or a similar thing with this side as well. And now actually this is, this is going really well now. Much simpler thing in front of us. How do we make progress from here? Um, well, what we can say is um, we can say this sine 2x term or the sine 4x term well, we could maybe convert those between each other um, a little bit. Or we can think, well, actually, sine 2x is sitting next to cos 2x. That reminds me of this formula up here. Because if I just double all of the angles in this, I get this. 
And if I halve both sides, I get a half sine 4x is equal to sine 2x plus 2x, which is right what's here. So I can, I can replace that, and now we're all good to go, right? Because we have a sine 4x on both sides, which means if sine 4x was 0, that would be a solution. And then if you get rid of them, you end up with a cos 6x equals a half, which is the other solution they were looking for. So I know that was a lot of algebra there and a lot of mess, messing through. Bear in mind, you have half an hour progression. So you've got a lot of time to just try working through things uh, as you go along. Um, try being as organized as you can with your work, putting over notes over here that might help you spot things. Um, but yeah, this is this is what we need to do. And, uh, and now we get to here. And uh, and this is this is very easy to finish now, as long as we're good with our exact values again. Uh, looking for 4x, we just times the range by 4. Um, sine of is 0 at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. Divide all answers by 4, we get these. And, uh, and then over here, slightly more difficult, when is uh, cos of x a half? Um, similar to what we asked before, we need to look in quite a long range here. If we just figure out the first couple of solutions, so pi over 3 is obviously the principal one. The other one is, of course, going to be 3 pi over 2 minus that, I guess. No, it's not. Sorry. To get positive half, it's going to be 2 pi minus that, um, which is this. Uh, six. Sorry, yeah, 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is pi pi over 3. And now that we have the two sort of principal-ish ones, we can just add 2 pi to each of these in turn. So add 2 pi to that one to get here adds 2 pi to get here, adds 2 pi now to this one to get here, add 2 pi to this one to get here. This is nearly 6 pi, which is as far as I can go. So that will be all my answers. Divide everything by 6, and we'll end up with all of these. Except, except, going all the way back to the start, not all of these are actual solutions. Because remember the thing we were solving all the way before was involved tans, or alternatively, you can think of it as involving dividing by causes. So if any of these, and these clearly won't, but if any of these leads to cos of x equals 0, or cos of 2x, or cos of 3x, or cos of 4x equals 0, they won't actually be solutions. Um, and of course, um, if you put in cos of, if you put in pi over 4 into cos of 2x, you'll end up with cos of pi over 2, which is 0. So that can't be a solution. Um, and likewise, this one can't be a solution because of this cos of x right there. And this one can't either. Um, and you end up with 0, pi, um, and all of these as your only solutions. So the other question I wanted to do was from 2018. It's this one here. Um, in this question, we may use this first result without a proof, which is very kind of them. I'm not sure why this isn't allowing me to. There is. Um, we can use this result, which is very nice of them to allow us to use that. Given that uh, x is between there, let's solve this here. So let's group these terms up such that we can actually use the result that we've been signposted towards using. So let's put the cos x and the cos 4x first, because there's one of those, and then three lots of the other two things coming second. And now let's just use these results. So um, a is x, b is 4x, means a plus b is 5x over 2 is 5x over 2. And this will be uh, uh, um, 3x over 2, because 4 minus 1 is 3 over 2. It doesn't matter that I've put the 4 second. I could just pretend it's first and do 4 minus 1 here. And of course, even if you didn't, cos of minus 3 over 2x is the same as cos of 3 over 2x, because it's an even function. And likewise, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 minus 2 is 1. So we end up with these two things here. Now, let's um, do some work to this, I guess. So what we can do is we can obviously expand that out. We can factorize out 2, and we can also factorize out cos 5 over 2x from the whole thing to leave us with this. And now, do you want to see me do it again? Because I'm just going to do it again. I'm just going to use this result again, except I can't use this result just quite yet because of the 3 here. So let's just write this as this plus one lot of this plus another two lots of it later, because now I can use the result again on these two. And I'm just kind of hoping this will work out. And it works out quite well, because 3 over 2x plus a half x is um, uh, 2x halved as a single x. And taking away, you end up with a half x, uh, which is fantastic. What is going on here? Yeah, sorry, there it is. So two lots of cos x, cos a half x. And now you can factorize out the cos of a half x to leave you with this business and an extra 2, I guess, um, and you end up with two, 4 cos 5 over 2x. Uh, the cos of a half x has come out as well. 3 pi and cos x plus 1. And now here are three things multiplying together to make 0. So either this one is 0, this one is 0, or that one is 0. And uh, and that will be all we have to do. Uh, this one is super easy. You get cos is pi, obviously, in this range is the only answer to that. This one I don't even need to check, because whatever solutions I get to this, I'm going to get them all here, because this is essentially just a more squinched up version of this graph. So, okay, let's do cos inverse is 0, um, and of course, 5 over 2x, if you times that by 5 over 2, you're looking up to 5 pi. Um, you'll end up with these two things. Um, the next one, uh, well, these two are the principal ones, obviously, aren't they? Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Add 2 pi to it, add 2 pi to it, and then add one more 2 pi to get to 4.5 pi, slightly less than 5. And then when we times all these by 2, which means cancelling all those 2s and dividing by 5, you'll end up with all these. One of them is a repeat, which is nice in any case. 
we have this, 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 and that as our solution. So five in total. Nice little uh, start to that question then. Um, so now we have this thing, and uh, and we need to state when this is true. So, well, we've got two causes adding together here. We know what to do with those because we were signposted up here to do exactly this. So if we have a is x plus y and b is x minus y, um, I think a plus b is just 2x. Half is this just x, so that's very nice. And a minus b is 2y. Halved is just y, so that's gorgeous. So it's just going to be 2xy. Fantastic. Let's put that guy in there. And, uh, and I'm also going to write cos 2x as 2 cos squared x minus 1, um, which is just using the double angle formula for that one there. The reason I'm doing that is because I notice if I do minus minus 1 is a plus 1, it will cancel with this one. And whenever we're solving equations, having it equal 0 is the way to go, right? So this is just ensures that I could get it equal to zero, which means when I factorize this, two things multiplying to make zero, I can just set them equal to zero and be done with it. So here, either cos x equals zero, or cos y minus cos x equals zero. Of course, this gives you cos x is pi over two, that's the only answer in this range. And uh, and here, um, you can do this. Now, if x and y are both between zero and pi, look at the cos graph between zero and pi, it, it's a one-to-one -one function between zero and pi. It repeats when it goes further, but between 0 and pi, it's a one-to-one -one function. So if cos y equals cos x, that means y must be equal to x, uh, if it's in this range. If you went further, of course, then, you know, cos of uh, 360 would be equal to cos of 0, and, and 360 doesn't equal 0. But in this range, that's a, that's an okay thing to say, and we'll be done with that as well. The last part of this question is, is certainly the most difficult bit, I think, uh, personally. Um, but we can pick up a few marks for doing something relatively straightforward. Again, here's two causes adding together, so we'll do do this idea here, and uh, we'll just put that into the formula, uh, exactly with just the a's and the b's as x and y's, so that's not difficult. Um, and now we get to, to this bit, not, not too easy to deal with. Um, there's a few things you could try and do to this, I guess. Um, this 3 over 2 business, just like in the previous question, ideally we need to find a way to make that go away. Uh, we, we just don't want it, right? We just want it to go. Now, notice here that we've got, unlike the previous question, where all the angles matched up really quite quickly for us. Actually, no, they didn't. I had to make this change to cos 2x. So again, let's, let's do that kind of idea again, where we've got half of x plus y and half of x minus y as the arguments of these causes, and then a proper x plus y here. So let's halve this down. All right, let's use the double angle formula we used before. And now, okay, well, if that's true, then it's true for instead of x, x minus y, or x plus y. Um, and if that's true, then we could just halve this angle to half this angle and we'll end up with this here so i think cos of x plus y based on the double angle formula is this and that just ensures that some of these arguments match a bit better so that's all i was doing there um we get a one we get a plus one here which will cancel a little bit with the three over two but not quite so we end up with this mess if this was equal to zero just like the first question it would be fantastic we can start factorizing and solving but it doesn't so that's a bit disappointing. I decided to double everything and move everything over. And now again, we, we've got to look at this and think, um, well, okay, we can't just factorize stuff out because this one is being annoying, right? We can't just do that. So what can we do? And I think here I just times everything by minus one. Yeah, I did, okay. So what can we do to this to make it like actually work, to, 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 to get any kind of solving done? It looks a bit like a quadratic, right? Got some squares here, got some non-squares there. Um, it doesn't seem like it will factorize. I mean, where's this term going to come from? Um, so I guess we could just use the quadratic formula based on cos of a half x plus y. I think that might be a thing you could do. I think an easier strategy, um, again, thinking about quadratics, is the other way to solve to try and solve a quadratic if you've eliminated just factorizing, quadratic formula, and all that. Maybe just completing the square. And actually, when you look at it this way, that turns out like it might work okay because this square roots very easily. So it will look like this, right? Where this will square times by itself to make that term. Uh, when we cross terms once here, we'll get minus four lots of the mix, which is exactly what this is. And then the plus one, well, that just sits out there. We'll take away this thing squared to make completing the square work. And now why does this work well? Because it initially looks like absolute hot garbage. Well, because cos squared can be written as 1 minus sine squared. And if you do that, you're going to get rid of these ones, finally. That thing that we wanted to do the whole time, the 1 is going to go away and we'll have something equal 0, which is fantastic. Now, it's actually fantastic in a way that I didn't intend, which is that we can't just factorize this and, and 
choose things to be zero. But what we can say is here's something squared and here's something squared, and they're supposed to add to make zero. That can only be the case if both of them are zero at the same time, because you know otherwise they're just ooh, this, sorry. This should be a sign. Um, yeah, sorry. This should just be a sign. It, it doesn't matter as you'll see, but this should just be a sign of this thing equals zero, because it's this thing squared plus this thing squared equals zero. Because square things are either positive or zero, we can only have both things be zero. Um, so again, this has to equal zero, but it doesn't really matter. I can just square both sides. Um, so okay, well, this is the easier one to deal with, right? That just gives you sine of sine is zero um, at zero and pi. Um, now we're taking away two angles here. The most one angle could be is pi, and the least the other angle could be zero. So when you take them away, you're not going to get anything bigger than pi. So we're just going to get to here, I think. But then when we double that, that's when we're actually taking away the angles. And there's no way we can do x minus y equals 2 pi. Right? So let's ignore that and just say 0 is the solution. So we've got x minus y equals 0. And now if we know that, we can now go to the other one that also has to be 0 at the same time. And we can say, well, x minus y is 0. Cos of 0 is just 1. So we can just take this down here and say it's 1. Uh, add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, and you get this. Cos of, or arc cos of a half, uh, again, in the range that we're looking for, which is we can only go up to 2 pi if we're adding these things together, um, is going to be pi over 3. Because if we go for the other one and then double it, we're going to be way outside of the range. Um, the other one, what would the other one be? It would be 2 pi minus pi over 3, right? But then, of course, when you double that, you're going to be way bigger than 2 pi. So this is the only one we can actually have. And now here's our similar equation. And let's add them together to get 2x equals 2 pi over 3. Halved is... 1 pi over 3, and then of course y must be the same thing to make that work. And we'll end up with our two answers. Um, quite a difficult ending of that question. Bearing in mind, I think if you got this far, I think I looked at the mark scheme, like this far was something like either 16 or 17 out of 20. So you did amazing if you got that far, even if you uh, didn't spot this trick here. But again, if you, if you think it through super clearly and think about all the things that you can do, all the things you can try, um, eventually, and you've got half an hour progression, remember, eventually you might be able to come up with that strategy and... Uh, and be able to finish off the question. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.